All right, before we start, two questions that I know. Oh, actually, hold on. My mind is blanking. Who are the two questions? Oh, yeah, 1.2. Duh. Okay. Two questions I know someone somewhere is going to ask. One is, when is Game Update 1.2 coming out? The answer is soon, very soon. Isn't that right, James? Well, I thought I said, like, within a week. <laughs> Just kidding. Just I don't kidding. know what he's talking about. Just kidding. He had been hit in the head before he said that. Um, and we'll be hitting the head again if he says it again. Uh, yeah, so 1.2 is coming very soon, I hope. Just kidding. <laughs> I hope that we'll have more news to share on that next week. And the other thing that I know a lot of people have been asking about and questioning us on is uh, the possibility of uh, character transfer being available. That is coming. Uh, it is a high, high priority for the development team. They're working on it right now. Um, well, maybe not right now. It is Easter Sunday. Anyway. Um, yeah, we're working. Uh, but not on character transfer. So anyway, look, the point is, uh, Asia Pacific character transfer is the first pre uh, step in the process. That's going to happen right after 1.2 goes live. Uh, and then after that, we'll be implementing uh, a larger and more robust system for uh, character transfer. That will include, by the way, character copy to the public test server. So when the next large patch comes along, um, you should be able to copy your character across at will and test things out, uh, unlike the manual process we've been, we've been dealing with until now. So, there you go. I guarantee someone will turn up in the middle and ask the question anyway, but, yeah, that's your cue to laugh at them. All right, there we go. Cool. So, Q&A. So, why is this mic going in there? It's weird. Uh, no, we're good. Uh, why don't you guys all introduce yourselves and what you do before we start asking questions? I'm Emmanuel Luzinki. I'm the technical design director of Star Wars World Republic. I'm James Olin, I'm the game director. I'm Damien Schubert, I'm the lead system designer for the project. Corey Butler, live producer. I'm uh, Cameron Winston, I'm a combat designer on the project. And it's, this is Stephen Reed, community manager. Uh, so yeah, if anyone has any questions, uh, raise your hands, I will wander around with a microphone and make sure I get you. If anyone's standing in the aisles and wants to stay for the Q&A, come on in, stand on the black carpet, get off the aisle. Don't want to block anyone walking through. Want to make sure there's plenty of room and there's lots of room here still. You guys can all come in if you want. You want to get closer? You don't have to. I'm just saying. You have a question. So uh, with the SOA fight in uh, Eternity Vault, um, why, why did you guys choose to make the ball lightning have a DOT effect? Because every freaking time our raid members are running into those things. They don't just like explode and do damage, they tick like a few times and do damage, and that's really annoying. Like, and it's, it's just like, the ad, I, I wish you guys would have like a line or something from the ball lightnings to show like whose lightning it is, because it gets really confusing in the heat of the moment. So uh, obviously, you know, uh, the SOA fight is, is, is known to have a few issues that we're working very hard to address. Uh, you know, a greater visibility in, in operation mechanics is something that we're constantly striving to achieve. Uh, you know, uh, certain effects that are uh, set up as damage over time effect versus uh, instant effect uh, is part of the difficulty of an encounter, and uh, the operations designers take that into account when they're uh, making these kinds of decisions. So uh, I guess the, the first answer to your question is, it's damage over time effect because that was what the designer felt was the best solution for uh, the challenge level of the encounter. And the second thing is, you know, why is it hard to see uh, where the ball lightnings are attacking? That's definitely something we'd like to improve visibility on, and we're, we're definitely make, working to make some improvements to uh, the SOA fight in, in the future. Uh, but yeah, it, it's something we'd always love to do, is, is communicate our mechanics better to you guys. So to your question exactly, we did risk create entirely the ball lightning mechanics. And uh, not only have people be able to test it on the test server, but uh, we, have, we gave ourselves more time to take into the account their, their bugs that they find on the test server and, and fix it before we push it out. So that's one of the reasons we are taking more time for the patch, but so we are relying as well on you guys testing transferring your characters and testing the separations to make sure they are as bug free as possible. Uh, is there any intention to do uh, group ship combat, like both people in one instance? Someone said ship combat, James was like, what? <laughs> uh, we are not talking about new 
ship from it features at this time. But we are exploring stuff. We have a whole team devoted to the space experience, so you are going to hear announcements in the future, this year. Don't we also have a secret project yeah. that you like to talk about? Yes, there's a secret project. Questions? Oh. Uh, with 1.2, KP on Nightmare is going to drop uh, black hole accommodations. Is EV Nightmare also going to drop a black hole? That's a great question. I don't think we have any of the item guys here, right? Uh, we, we don't have the itemization team here, but I can tell you that the uh, uh, itemization 1.2 has pretty much undergone a thorough revamp in order to make the various difficulties map correctly to uh, uh, the rewards that you get for them. And they're going to continue to iterate on that and get better at that as we release these next patches as well. What time should we expect the nightmare mode, the new, the new operation, to come into the game? Uh, we're aiming that for the next game update, which we can't announce the time of that at this moment. Of course, Stephen Reed will really kill me. That's the week after. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. He likes me to say that. I, I already warned him. <laughs> I also, want to, I also want to point out that even though Nightmare is not launching with 1.2 for the new operation, the hard mode is plenty hard. I don't know if we've had an, I, don't, I think we might have had one guild clear it so far uh, on eight man hard and almost no, we've had very few guilds clear it on story. So it is definitely a more significant challenge this time around. Although a good point about the Nightmare mode when it will come is that it won't be just a title and just a pat on the back saying it'll be good. Uh, it will come with its own itemization. So there will be uh, actually a real reason to run Nightmare, but expect a significant challenge for it. Uh, are you working on a fix for the interrogator boss for Director 7? Yes. <laughs> Anyone have questions? So I got another one here. Out of all the classes, Sith Warrior is the most under two. I like the the tank out of the three tanks between Power Tech and uh, Assassin. No one wants to take those into into an ox. And compared to the other like DPS classes, like a mercenary or a sniper, we don't want marauders in our ops. So, is, are you guys doing anything to make that make the class less under two than it is now? Well, um, my question to you would be, why, why do you think that they're under-tuned right now? They're, they just have, in my opinion, they die more because they have less defensive capabilities, even though they have force camo, things like force camo. Um, they, they're just, they just don't put enough DPS out. I mean, I, I swap a mercenary out for a Sith warrior and we'll bolt down something, whereas if I have a Sith warrior in my ops and I don't have a mercenary, we're not going to kill something. So um, that, that's a rather complicated question. Um, uh, first off, I, uh, I don't necessarily agree that Sith Warrior is undertuned. Uh, we uh, find that uh, within roles, all of our classes are performing very close to each other as far as what our expectations are. Um, and our, our expectations uh, don't change. So we don't change our expectations from patch to patch, which is something I've read in the forums. Uh, we're, very, we're very committed to making sure that uh, every class is desirable in all kinds of content. And uh, it's my hope that with 1.2, when you guys get the combat log, you're going to see that uh, some of these classes that have been uh, traditionally viewed as underperforming on the boards and, and in, and in uh, the rumor mill are actually probably doing more DPS than people expect. And, uh, you know, obviously if that isn't the case and we start to see some combat logs and parses coming in that uh, don't really validate those assumptions, then we're always willing to go back and revisit these kinds of questions. But as of right now, based on all our internal testing, our sustained DPS tests, our burst DPS tests, our survivability tests, and, uh, you know, the many hours that the uh, the, the other class designers and myself have put into uh, playing uh, in one-on-ones, in group content, in, in operations, and in flashpoints. We're very comfortable and happy with where our classes are performing in relation to each other. Oh, oh can I ask a question? Do you remember your hand up? Uh, well, first, I want to say I think maybe you're playing with the wrong kind of marauder. I have a marauder in my guild, and he uh, goes above and beyond the call, and he never dies unless he's being stupid about it. Uh, and as a Jedi Guardian tank, I find that, well, I rock and I never die because I have a great consular healer. 
but I think the big thing that I want to ask is that, you know, you guys are doing a great job, and uh, just keep up the good work with, you know, fixing the bug. SOA on Nightmare is just still ridiculous, because we get we get on to the second phase, you know, the transition, and the floor is gone on some attempts. Other attempts, lightning balls are, you know, tripling the damage. It, it's just too much. You can't get it. And uh, hopefully you won't take out the Inferno title either, because I'm kind of sick of people saying, oh, you're just a noob. And I'm like, no, it's it's just buggy, and we have great DPS and great tanks. Where, where was the question? Uh, well... Will SOA be fixed for the most part in patch 1.2? Well, Emmanuel right here has been actually working on the Eternity Vault for several weeks in a row. It's been his major focus, and he can talk about that. And if it's not up to par, you can blame him. <laughs> yeah, so a few points. Yes, you're right. It was buggy. It was buggy many patches in a row. And uh, sometimes we, we fix something, and the poor Mr. there. Um, we have no report of bugs on the, on the test server, which is great. And again, it's the next patch where you'll be able yourself to go and test things for yourself and make sure. Uh, we've fixed a lot of issues, and we are trying to bring it down to zero bugs, uh, which is a goal. Uh, but uh, I, you know, don't take my word for it. Please try it again once one point will come out, which is very soon apparently. Um, and uh, one thing I wanted to say that every time we see on the forums or other forums like clear indication of a problems with uh, you know leaving the emotions out, but like a description of what happened and if there is a video, usually we find the bug extremely rapidly, especially when there is a video. It's like we can literally see, oh look, that effect is on, but this one is not. Oh. I know what the problem is. So the, the community has been key for us to find these issues, and, and they were actually really complex, and we fixed every single one we know about. There is no known bug that we still think is in uh, 1.2, but you guys will tell us. And I won't put in the patch that's always fixed until there's no more reports whatsoever of bugs. Thank you. All right, I play Vanguard Tank, and uh, I'm going to talk about can't hold threat for some reason. I run out of ammo way too quickly. I have to hit everything as as much as I can. Uh, ammo regen is just horrible. And I mean, people with equal gear as me are instantly ripping off in just one crit, and it's really annoying. Even I mean, half the time they're taking the abuse, and I'm waiting for Tom to come up because the only way I get any aggro is by Tom. Uh, so, is your question, like, what is your question? Um, can you fix Vanguard threat? So, um, all right, so the question is, can we fix Vanguard threat? So, uh, I think what you're experiencing is a twofold problem, and the first is uh, we have a lot of uh, mechanics in our flashpoints and operations which uh, uh, have threat modifications which currently aren't being telegraphed very well to you guys, and we're trying to do a better job of letting you know when, uh, when threats uh, being manipulated so that you can kind of uh, compensate for it. And the second thing with um, uh, running uh, out of ammo, uh, in 1.2, uh, the top of the, your energy shot at the top of the tanking tree is going to be off the global cooldown, and it's going to be uh, another uh, energy management tool for you. So not only is it going to be like a free shot that does damage, so you're going to get more threat out of it, it's also just going to give you energy uh, or uh, ammo back. So uh, it's going to kind of uh, both help you with your threat and with your uh, uh, energy management. So it's my hope that you'll be able to use that tool and uh, you know, the new combat log that you're getting 1.2 to help analyze your rotation and see where maybe you're spending a little bit too much energy that you could kind of uh, move into other things uh, to help increase your uh, overall threat generation and better energy management. Um, in 1.2, the backstab cooldown was increased to 12 seconds from 9 seconds. That affects Acid Blade, which is the top tier talent in the concealment tree. And I was just wondering if they're going to buff Acid Blade damage to make up for that, because it seems like it basically makes that talent useless. So, um, uh, well, I disagree that it makes it useless. Uh, the, uh, the concealment and uh, the scrapper tree uh, overall uh, has been, you know, restructured a little bit in 1.2, uh, but uh, for clarity, just would like to, to say, uh, you know, unilaterally, all of our tests, both sustain, burst, you know, PvP, PvE tests for the concealment and scrapper trees, 
have uh, shown that they are uh, very, very, very close to uh, all the other uh, DPS specs that compete with them in the game. So uh, we're very actually confident that the uh, 1.2 uh, scrap or the 1.2 concealment um, uh, operative and uh, scoundrel respectively are going to be able to do competitive DPS. They're going to be uh, desired for operations and for PvP groups. And uh, again, I'm hoping that the new combat log, uh, you'll be able to validate these claims yourself uh, when, when, when 1.2 comes live. Uh, as to specifically, um, is, is there anything that comes into it? A lot of the changes in that tree with the cooldowns and the rotations, uh, it was it was uh, sort of like it said shuffled around. But ultimately, we feel that the end result is going to be um, very comparable to what to what we had before. It's, it's come down a little bit, but again, comparatively to other specs within the same role, uh, we're very happy with where we where we ended for 1.2. Really enjoyed the, the flashpoints like Black Talon and the Foundry and things. Is that something that we can see in big patches, or is that something we'd have to wait till the next expansion to look for? So you're specifically talking about flashpoints, which have more of a story focus. Um, no, you don't have to wait till the expansion. We have um, when you play Rise of the Rack Rules, that is very much story focused. We're going to be alternating between flashpoints that um, are very story heavy and ones that are a little bit more story light. So yeah, you don't have to wait that long. Uh, there are clearly some characters that have a complex uh, rotation in battle, and there are some characters that are uh, much more easy sort of to play from a DPS standpoint. Is that a, a design decision, like a, an actual design decision, or is that just how it came out? So, uh, yes, uh, they, they, they are designed. So um, the goal with different specs, right, uh, you know, is to give different players uh, who have different desires in their play style uh, different ways to express both uh, their Star Wars fantasy and the way they like to do damage. So, you know, uh, some, some people out there are going to really, uh, the arsenal tree is going to really appeal to them. They just love hitting people with Tracer Missile. That's what they want to do. Uh, other people are going to really appreciate the uh, kind of gameplay that uh, a, a Watchman brings to, uh, to their combat rotation. So I guess the answer is yes. Uh, we do design a different DPS uh, experience for every every class, a different tank experience, and that's to try to make the, the game feel more alive and to make your choices matter more because you know choice is very important to us. It's also important to us that we have uh, rotations that are complex for the players that really crave that level of complexity, and we also have some classes and rotations that are a little simpler and a little easier for people to get a handle on. Um, you know, it, 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 that's just part of creating that sort of variety of experience and that, that understanding that people have different expectations of how complicated they want those rotations to be when they play the game. Those of you in the aisle, can you guys just move in a little bit? Make sure you're on the black carpet. I don't want anyone blocking the aisle. Thank you. Um, did anyone who, who uh, before I go back to some people who have more questions, did anyone not get to ask a question yet that wants to? Yeah, I see some people back here. So, uh, as a guild leader, it's really hard to recruit. Um, the realm forums, where it's like A to F, it's, I mean, your guild uh, recruitment things get jumbled. Other people on other servers are looking at the wrong stuff. Um, are there plans to make realm forums, or is that something that you guys are happy with how it works now? So we made the decision to go with uh, what we call server forums uh, after a lot of research into other MMOs uh, who do or had, had done uh, server-specific forums. Um, it was a combination of two factors. One was uh, basically uh, forums often being very empty uh, or pretty much having no activity. And the second was uh, forums, in particular PvP forums, becoming pretty much a cesspit of um, insults and screaming and basically tantrums. And unlike some other MMOs, um, we have a fully active uh, forum moderation team who are on call basically 24-7. And when faced with 200 plus uh, individual forums that they'd have to moderate, it was basically going to be a little bit too much for us to do. Um, so we felt that those two combinations of factors um, meant that server forums would be something that we, we would like to try out. So we already kind of modified that um, uh, to sort of improve that experience, but we're really open to feedback. Um, you know, uh, you can have a chat with me afterwards if you like, or we can talk about it in more detail um, to try and improve the experience. You know, but to be honest, generally speaking, we think it's been relatively successful for us, and it's kind of achieved the aims that we had, which was to keep the amount of moderation we needed to do down, and also to keep those forums generally kind of busy. One of the 
the things that's also really nice about the server group forms that I discovered after we launched them was that so when you create a thread, you have to create a prefix which shows your server. The advanced search on the forums, you can choose that prefix and it'll just show you a list of those threads on the server. So we're trying to get that word out for that. So that way if you are looking for a guild or you're looking to recruit, you can just do that search and see every thread that's just relevant to your server. It's an easy way of having a server specific page to look at. Someone over here had a question, right? Yeah, you are. Uh, thank you. Uh, I love your game. It's really great. You can really tell all the love that's been put on, uh, into it from the community. Um, I'm wondering, are you going to make any smaller type races, like maybe Ewoks for the Republic or Jawas for the Empire, available maybe through the Legacy system or something? Uh, well, any any uh, player races that we ever add will need to speak human. And so, right there, Ewoks and Jawas are probably right out. So maybe in the far future, we might get a little bit crazier. Like, I think I talked about that on Friday. It would be really cool to be able to play a droid. But you won't be seeing that anytime soon. But it's something that we've, you know, we've talked about. So, maybe allowing a player to play a Jawa in 2015. You heard it here first. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He said jokingly. <laughs> jokingly. <laughs> Uh, anyone else new before I go back to the repeated peoples? Uh, in war zones right now, when the uh, sentinels and marauders and tanks, the force stun slash force choke doesn't activate with the resolve bar. So basically, you could have your full resolve, and then they'll force stun, force choke you, and you still go up in the air and have that happening to you. Like, is that supposed to happen, or is it just like uh, class specific? Like, so awesome. Th that's the second time I've kind of heard that question over this weekend, and it's definitely something I'm, I'm going to have to look into when, when we get back, uh, you know, to Austin. But I I mean, uh, I can tell you the design intent is obviously, uh, I don't know if you read the Q&A that we did uh, yesterday, but uh, stuns and, and safe effects and knockback effects are not supposed to uh, impair your character's movement uh, when you have a full resolve bar. If that's happening, it is a bug. And uh, if, if uh, this is actually happening, we can investigate it, certainly, and if it is happening, we can stop it from happening. However, I just want to point out that, you know, immobilized effects and uh, slow effects definitely still affect you when you have a resolve bar. So you might find yourself unable to move to the full resolve ball because you have a root effect on you. Uh, I think it was last week's public test notes, or it might have been the week before, but you guys said that you were changing the loop distribution system in the uh, hard flash points. Uh, could somebody talk about that? And does that also apply for ops? Um, uh, I don't think that there's anybody on this stage who can talk about that with great authority. Uh, beyond the fact of we went through a revamp of our itemization uh, and in order to make the rewards uh, uh, more robust. I think that we've made less loot uh, destined loot. We removed, um, we removed destined loot. We removed destined loot. This was the idea that uh, we would drop loot that was designed only for you. Uh, and that even if there was someone else that could use it, you would be the only one that could take it. Uh, we still like that idea. We might want to come back to it in the future, but you know, clearly the implementation that we did right now is causing more problems than it was solving. Uh, so that's that's the biggest change that you're going to see. Uh, that and to change the tokenization uh, of the various dungeons. For uh, combat design on the Guardians or the Juggernauts, uh, they have one 12 second cooldown that's AoE and one cone that costs a lot and it, it doesn't do damage. And when you have like four triggers, five triggers, six triggers in your raids, that can drop 10 AoEs in like five seconds. You lose aggro on a trash pack instantly, it's, it's not competition. Is, is that meant for Juggernauts and Guardians meant to be single target, or is there going to be anything to help with AoE threat? So, um, we definitely don't mean a tank to be the single target tank or the AoE tank like that. You know, that's not part of the design. Uh, we want tanks to be successful in all those situations. Uh, we're constantly exploring and evaluating how uh, tank threats uh, stack up against each other, and uh, uh, from our internal testing uh, right now, like I said, we're, we're happy with where we're at as far as threat generation goes. You know, we're, we're getting, you're getting more threat generation on uh, your top tier talent at the end of the tree. Uh, also, um, you know, there's a little bit of love going into the, you know, for the, for the 
the sweepy slashes and you know smashes and stuff like that. It may require a different approach. Like um, you know, you may if you see a group spread up, maybe you gotta force charge a guy, push him into the other group before you you put your smash down. But uh, ultimately, uh, what I want you to know is we're, we're constantly reevaluating you know uh, the tank balance uh, for threat for survivability. Uh, you know, it, it's never ending process. So as we start learning more, you know, again when we start seeing your guys as combat logs, we start you know seeing you know logs for for guilds and start doing things. We're constantly going to be re-asking ourselves these questions, and if we start to find that the Juggernaut and the Guardian are, are falling behind the AOE threat race, we're, we'll definitely address that. I mean, it's not uh, it's not a design decision to make them bad in one type of tank. We would like them to be good as tanks. Are there plans for additional hot ball arenas? Yes. Woo! Yes. Yeah, we have been discussing uh, basically doing some reskins of the Hutball, like putting it on a different planet, um, keeping the game mechanics very similar. Just like another sport, right? Like, uh, you know, you have a different stadium somewhere else. That's something we've discussed, but there's no timeline for that right now. So I heard a rumor that Lucasfilm didn't want same-sex relationships between your uh, your companions, and as a female IA, I really want to, like, thank Calio, like, really bad. And I'm disappointed that it wasn't in there. So, is there plans to implement that? Can can I retroactively romance Calio when it's put in, or is it even going to be put in? Um, first of all, LucasArts does not have that, that position at all. They're, they very much care about um, the community. And uh, in terms of when we're going to be adding same-sex romances, we do have it. Actually, we have our we have some of it already written. I can't say when it's coming in, but it is uh, it is something that you know Bioware is known for. It's something we're putting in. We have the full support of LucasArts to, uh, to do it. So you will be seeing it soon. Well, I won't say soon, but it won't be. The thing is, that we're not going to be retroactively changing characters. So it's going to be new characters. Anyone who hasn't asked a question? Yeah, you, sir. Hi, um, so with the flashpoints the way they are in the loot operations, I found that very, very quickly your characters don't need flashpoints anymore, like doing operations. So, nightmare flashpoints? Yeah. I don't think we have plans for nightmare flashpoints right now. One of the things that, where I think that we made a mistake on the itemization at ship uh, was pretty much making it so that especially the, the normal mode flashpoint rewards just weren't good enough over the, the greens and blues that you were finishing the game with. Uh, and so a lot of people were just skipping straight over to that. And I think there's still some calibration, some learning that we're going to do. Like I said before, I think 1-2 in general is a lot better on the itemization. We learned a lot from the launch of the game. Uh, and we're going to continue to tweak that philosophy. Actually, a request from my guildmate that the flashpoints seem to be kind of iffy from the Star Wars universe. Not the flashpoints, the ops kind of seem weird from the Star Wars universe. And he was wondering if maybe in the future we're going to get like an ops where we assemble our, our raid, our ops group, as a strike team going on like, say, if we're Republic going on to a capital warship on the opposite side and take down one of their generals or something. That, that could be a. Uh, in the future? Uh, well, we've definitely talked about that. We definitely want to push the uh, uh, the Star Wars experience as much as possible. Uh, one of the things about all of the in-game content in particular is that uh, we're struck by this balance where we want to be sure that we can push the more as much as we can, but at the same time, it's really important that the uh, the challenges that we present to the two sides and the itemization we present to the two sides is roughly equal. Uh, so especially for uh, right now, in the immediate future, we're focusing on third parties that both sides can hit on, but do we want to get to a place where you're doing a little of that direct conflict? Yeah. Uh, do I have an ETA for you? No. Uh, but 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 I but I will say we have big plans. So. All right. I think we got time for one more question. Has anyone not asked a question that really wants a chance to? Yes. Better make it a good one. No pressure. <laughs> so um, there was one spot in I think Mandalorian Raiders, which is a flashpoint. Can you speak up just a little bit? Sorry. Um, there was one point in uh, a flashpoint. I think it was Mandalorian Raiders on the Republic side, where you actually get um, uh, NPC 
NPC versions of the Imperial troops that come in and it's like another party that you're fighting against. Is there anything like we would have a PvP version where you would have like a quest on top of fighting other people? Like, is there anything th like that that you guys are thinking about at all? That is a great question for Gabe, uh, who is not here right now. Uh, now. We're going to be doing a lot of experimentation with flashpoints and operations in the future. Um, it's something you know we want to do. Eventually, we want to have that operation you know that replicates the end of Return of the Jedi, where you have like a space mission mixed with like um, the Death Star mission mixed with uh, fighting Ewoks, except we won't have Ewoks. But um, that's, you know we want to have that kind of multi-stage um, operation. That's the final grade, and we want to have to do a whole bunch of different things in between that. So yeah, you're going to. Uh, Seeing PvP in an operation or flashpoint, that would be a great experiment. I don't know if we're going to be able to do that, but you know, we're considering all sorts of different and original ways of presenting flashpoints and operations. Cool. So with that, I hope we give a big hand for the developers. Thank you guys very much. So, so, so.